morning. A great story about a 28 year old from Sterling Heights who hopes to leave behind a giant legacy. And we do mean giant and his work can already be seen at arenas and museums all across North America. Local force Nick Monticelli shares his story. When you have them on a steel stand, they're eight feet tall. They are bigger than life. Massive, huge, enormous. You can call them whatever you want, but Stephen Strickland calls them giant. And he calls his company, fittingly, Giant Helmets. We make and give away giant goalie masks. Uh, we can do football and baseball as well. If you're a Detroit sports fan, there is a chance you have seen Strickland's work around town. We're creating something that's timeless. Um, and we're creating something that people won't forget. Years ago, Strickland noticed how intricate and beautiful some NHL goalie masks were. When you're watching a game and you see on TV, they hand to the goalie mask for a quick second. You go, oh, wow, that's beautiful, but you don't really get to appreciate it. Part of his awe is because his cousin is an artist and has done the airbrushing for several goalies. But Strickland thought, why just a glancing shot on TV? Instead, they found a fiberglass company and made this. And once that mold was made, uh, Gerald, the artist, was able to just let it rip. After a few freebies to his favorite local teams, word of mouth advertising took off. So the business officially started and orders from teams, beer companies, celebrities, and more were pouring in. Those were the Olympic masks. Oh, okay. That one's in the Hockey Hall of Fame now. You have a giant helmet in the Hockey Hall of Fame? Yes. His favorite is one of the firsts for the Detroit Red Wings, not because of the helmet, but because of the memories. We had a shelf inside the kids to climb into and the kids just loved it or they would just, wow. And uh, it just, it, it, it warms you up in a way that I, I, there's not the right word for it. It just, that's what I want. Like they're never gonna forget that. That's amazing to me. It's that feeling Strickland hopes lasts forever. He wants his business to be in the business of making memories because soon this 28 year old will be one too. It's something that just uh, eats away at you and there's not really a way to reverse the damage. Steven has cystic fibrosis and it's damaged his lungs so bad that at 28 he needs a lung transplant. But even then cystic fibrosis is a terminal disorder. So a lung transplant could buy him some time but there's no way to know how much. You get this transplant and you're rolling the dice. But by not getting a transplant, you're just saying, okay, I know, <laughs> well, I'll see you. But if you get a transplant, you're giving yourself a shot to maybe live longer. For now, medication is keeping Strickland on his feet and focused on the business of giant helmets. He knows he's dying, but says as strange as it sounds, he wants these giant helmets to be his lasting legacy. These helmets are my way of staying alive because when I'm gone, I know that these helmets are not gonna be gone. They're gonna be there. So if I can take the time that I've got left and, and use that to create something that's timeless, I, gotta, I wanna do that. I absolutely love everything about what you just heard, the fact that these giant helmets are going to be his lasting legacy. Now, one thing that Stephen has noticed, though, is that, you know, these helmets are a little pricey. And, of course, the big guys can afford them, but high schools and places of the like can't. So they've got a new program, this part of the art system, where you can go on the website, buy one of these sticks, and we can show you a couple of them now. And what happens is that you get these, you can turn them into a fundraiser. So a school can then actually get one of the helmets. And then what they'll do is take some of the proceeds from that sale and turn around and give them to cystic fibrosis charities here in Michigan, Rock CF and the Bonell Foundation. So Abra and Rhonda, you combine those with this sticks, he's got a fantastic program going on. I love his disposition too. He knows he's dying, but you talk to Steven and he's probably one of the happiest and friendliest guys I've ever met. Wow. Yeah, and then just he really lit up when you talk to him about, you know, the smiles that people have when they're taking pictures with these yeah. creations, which really warms your heart. But yeah. gosh, I, I mean, and at the same time, you, you feel a broken heart just knowing what he's facing. So what a great way to we hope he this. defies all odds on his prognosis and lives a long life and continues to enjoy making memories for others. And this legacy that he's leaving behind is just so incredible. It will definitely be a great yeah. way to to keep his memory alive. Absolutely. Well, big thanks to Nick Monticelli for that story.